I hope you appreciate all this. All the effort I go to to bring you these podcasts. Ugh. We should do. Because if you've listened to half of everything I've told you, you should be a multi-millionaire by now. Certainly on the basis that if you follow my advice and you're young enough to take advantage over it over of it over a long term, then you'll do very well. So what what we'll go on, what what one, what one? How's the man dem? The uh, it's November the fifth. Being married to a Catholic, we don't you know go into it with all the guy burning that we used to when uh, I was a boy. And the good burgers of Edenbridge have, are still are still so traumatised and shocked by COVID that they've decided to cancel their firework display for the second year running, despite the fact that there's no evidence that COVID is at all transmissible in the outdoor areas that, where they're going to hold the firework display. And I speak as someone who went there two or three years ago held in the middle of a playing field. <laughs> the, rug- the rugby club playing field. <laughs> uh, anyway, they're all still, you know, cowering under their duvets from this virus. So, uh, I'm having a bit of a bonfire tomorrow night. Just a few friends around. We'll make it very easy. I'll put up tables. Possibly we're going to put up a marquee. Uh, We'll get some soup, hot soup, and a bonfire. Then if anyone wants to bring a firework, we encourage them to bring one big one, rather than 50 small ones. What else? Oh! Bank of England, and this is where you have to be. If you run a dental surgery, you have to be everything. You have to be head of IT, you have to be head of HR, you have to be head of uh, disciplinary and uh, complaints. You have to be the clinical head. You have to be head of uh, the finance. And so, Taking notice of the general economy and the way things are blowing, you know, when the winds are blowing, is, uh, oh, hello. Speed camera. You know what speed camera means. <laughs> if you ever, uh, go on YouTube. Watch a video, uh, watch a YouTube contributor called Chris Smoove, S-M-O-O-V-E. And he's, uh, he's, uh, used to do Call of Duty. I think it was Call of Duty 2 or something, videos. And, uh, Sorry, I'm busy waving to people out the window. Crime prevention, that's what I call it. So, <laughs> he, uh, he used to um, have a, a rifle and a shotgun. You're allowed to carry two guns. And uh, whenever he heard footsteps, he knew he was going to be in for some close combat, close quarter uh, combat. So, he used to shout, shotgun time! <laughs> and that's what, you know, when... Anyway, oh, look, I just diverged too much. I'm going to come back to that. I'll go to the economy. The Bank of England, having signaled that they're going to raise interest rates by saying that they were minded to increase interest rates because 
inflation is 3.1%, a forecast to rise to 3.4%, and then 5% after that. Interest rates being 0.25% at the moment, therefore grossly inadequate, right? What, what you've got to do with inflation, you've got to think of um, money printing as the accelerator of inflation and interest rates as the brake, right? So you can, you can, you can print loads of money <clears throat> as long as you're ready with your foot on the brake to put interest rates up as soon as you get inflation. And the reason why you get inflation with money printing is you've got more money chasing the same amount or fewer goods and services. So of course the price of everything goes up. And the reason why inflation is conquered by high interest rates is that, uh, is that it makes it more expensive. You can't uh, borrow money to buy stuff because uh, if, if borrowing is cheap and inflation is high, then obviously you're, you'd be sensible to borrow money to buy stuff because the cost of that stuff is gonna be more expensive in future. Whereas if uh, your uh, interest rates are high and the cost and, uh, is higher than inflation, then you're better off not borrowing money to buy stuff. So you get you don't you get hoarding under one and you get dishoarding or whatever the opposite is under the other. So anyway, all you need to know is that uh, it, it, putting up interest rates is the break. Now, the problem with this approach is that um, the reason the, the the way that they create the money is for the Bank of England basically to print it. So what happens is the government says, look, we want to spend a load of money. Uh, Bank of England, would you mind if we print, if we, we write out an IOU, would you mind Bank of England by uh, just buying it and uh, and then we'll get the Treasury to print some money up. Now, <laughs> that's why the government says that they're borrowing the money, they're borrowing the money, whereas in fact they're not. Through this sort of trick where they write an IOU and give it to the Bank of England and the Bank of England then then uh, pays the Treasury with money that they've just conjured out of nowhere and, and then the Treasury then prints the money and puts it into circulation in effect, then there, there is interest payable on this IOU, therefore you need interest rates to be kept low. If you're creating a load of money um, and writing a load of IOUs, then you need interest rates to be kept low. So, last thing you want is some perk from the Bank of England who knows what the game is, who's the one who's written, you know, who's cashed in all your IOUs, putting interest rates up. So, <clears throat> the, the government's in a bit of a bind, and the American government's in the same bind, only even worse, because they print money by the trillions, we only print it by the hundreds of millions at the moment. And, um, they want a bit of inflation because it reduces the the debt. Because there's no, you know, it doesn't matter if you owe someone a thousand pounds. If if uh, 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 that's what it costs to buy a ham sandwich, then who cares? You know, if you, you bought, let's say you bought two hundred and fifty thousand pounds and bought a house, which is the average price of a house now in the UK, um, and then uh, twenty years down the line you paid someone two hundred and fifty thousand pound back, but and all they could buy was a ham sandwich. I mean, that's, that's a good deal, isn't it, from your point of view? You've effectively swapped a house for a ham sandwich. And this is the, ra this is the racket that uh, the government is up to. And it's a complicated racket, and most people don't understand it, and you probably haven't understood my explanation. And if you, uh, if you don't, I don't blame you, because they don't get out of their way to make it simple to understand. There is a page on my website, firstimpressions.dental forward slash money, which explains it all, and you can take as many, you know, you can read that as many times as you like if you don't understand it the first time. But basically, what you need to know is that inflation is a tax, it uh, decimates your spending power, and, uh, and that uh, money printing is uh, causes inflation and uh, interest rates uh, bring it under control. But the interest rates have to be higher than the rate of inflation. And of course the government never really 
admits as to what the actual rate of inflation is. You know, I mean, if it's if it's actually 10%, they they might say, oh, it's 5%, or if it's 6%, or they might say, well, it's 2%, you know. So um, they're working against themselves. And this is, this is absolutely classic, centralized command and control economy, a la Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, and it never ends well. It never goes well, it never ends well. It leads to uh, distortion of the interest rates, leads to distortion of investment, and a bunch of people close to the government get loads of money which they don't deserve, and a bunch of hard-working entrepreneurs that, whose projects do deserve to be funded don't get funded, and a bunch of wankers whose projects would never ever find any real world finance um, end up being able to borrow money because the banks who are given the money are um, just desperate to um, put it anywhere and almost in a way the riskier the uh, you know as as interest rates go down the riskier the venture and the more the higher the interest rate because interest rates are the interest rate you get on your money is related to the, the risk that you take um, people started look, looking for riskier and riskier ventures you know Anyway, so what, what's all this got to do with dentistry, angry you ask? Well, first of all, uh, you know, we, we argued, the DPA, the GDPA, the dental uh, fusion argued for years that um, you couldn't get a course of dentistry for 75 quid. It just can't be done. Uh, unless you've got a money tree, <laughs> which of course the government does have and did have even in the 70s and so what they did was they managed to uh, subsidize uh, NHS dentistry to the point where it, it became viable to stay in it providing that uh, nobody looked too closely at what you were doing how you were achieving your targets you know and again it's like the old Soviet Union you know you were set a target for the number of cabbages or the number of beetroots um, and uh, or the number of trees cut down and uh, people develop ways of uh, making it look like they've achieved their targets when they haven't and so for example in uh, I mean in the old uh, Soviet Union if it was log cutting what they would do is they would cut down a tree and then uh, uh, the next day they would go back to the same tree and just like cut two inches off the stem and it, to make it look like it had been cut down that day so <laughs> and they, they then recounted it in that day's figures and so the figures of uh, lumber and forestry being uh, uh, being uh, cut down were, were artificially high and in dentistry it's done by you're paid exactly the same amount of money for one filling as you are for ten and so uh, you, you only do one filling you don't do ten you do one filling and then when it's time to open up a new, you know, you've enough time has elapsed to open up a new course of treatment, you do another filling. And then six months later, you do another filling. <laughs> and then if the patient gets all 10 fillings done without their teeth dropping out, they're doing well, aren't they? Whereas they should have all been fixed five years ago. And, you know, we're, we're um, again, see this on a daily basis. You know, I, had a, I had a patient in who'd, uh, had some teeth out uh, and it's fairly easy I think to sort of take out if you're going to take out an upper left four it's easy enough to take out an upper left five at the same time so that I think that you do get multiple jobs done under some circumstances where it's literally just five seconds extra work but you certainly don't get multiple root treatments done and uh, I've had someone come in who's had a lower uh, acrylic denture which is the minimum necessary to uh, get the highest NHS fee for that patient on that course of treatment and uh, had uh, four decayed teeth for four fillings just not done and as I say this is like it's abuse of the system but it's part of uh, working on the NHS and being able to pay your bills or may or make any money uh, the first leg of that is to um, not to have too close a scrutiny 
and then the second leg obviously is just to abuse the system by not doing the work that you're you know you've signed a document saying you're congratulately obliged to do so the free market um, we, we uh, have said that this can't go on like this and and in a way we were sort of right and wrong because it, it, it couldn't go on like that but it went on like that for a lot longer than we thought you know it went we thought that in 1990 or 1992 the system couldn't go on and what do you know it took until 2020 2021 2021 really so we were 29 years in advance we predicted the collapse of the national health service but you know that's my entire practicing career I, i've spent my entire practicing career saying that things were being done in a dumb way they couldn't work and they wouldn't work in and they won't work and uh the government was uh, spent 29 years laughing at me and saying well we have got an excellent fire service and uh if fire breaks out anywhere we'll just go and put out the fire wherever it is you know whether it's scarborough uh pictures of people waiting in in lines to register with a new dentist that stretched miles down the seafront or you know where, where they said they then said oh no everyone's got to register online so that this massive long line then became invisible because it was everyone was on an online waiting list or or just people who had courses of treatment who still got mouths full of decay and no you know and nobody to inspect them to you know and certainly nobody struck off you know certainly nobody uh let's say nobody who says uh you need a scan and polish but i'm not going to do that for you on the health service you need to go and see my hygienist and have it done privately i haven't heard of anybody anybody and that's a scan that's been going on for years i mean 20 years probably uh, so so there's some some complicity because if you think about it what's the the alternative the alternative is that um come on here we go is that they're going to start you know if they was to strike off every dentist that uh that sent the patients to the hygienist privately they wouldn't have any nhs dentist left so of course they're not going to enforce that rule do you know what i mean it's just like talk, talk about turning Nelson's eye to the problem. Uh, they've long ago decided to do that. Uh, but the trouble is, uh, if Nelson can't see that, then there's a lot of other things that you won't be able to see either. You know, you can't selectively enforce the stuff. You either have to say, look, you know, we want we want NHS dentists, and if you bend the bro or the rules or even break a few, we will turn a blind eye. Uh, but then, you know, the dentist is going to push this. It will get pushed, won't it? Push it real good. It's going to get pushed like Harry. So. So where am I going with all this? Well. The, the COVID drove a coach and horses through the NHS financial model and also their clinical model clinical model being um, sell things cheap quick you know uh, high volume low cost restorative repeat restorative work uh, it used to be <laughs> actually it used to be high volume low cost repeat restorative work it is now they've taken the repeat out of it <laughs> it's just restorative work one off <laughs> so because there's nothing to be gained by repeating it unless uh, the patient's coming in for a new course of treatment um, in which case you're more, more likely to be finishing off the last course of treatment. I can't get a chrome done because our chrome lab is inundated and there's a backlog. And that's because there's a lot of NHS dentists who are still on 100% uh, of their pre-COVID income, the 65% of their pre-COVID output. And have signed a thing pinky swear that they won't do any more private are now doing so much private that uh, it's caused a uh, private dentist like me to have a backlog on the um, on the private labs
because you know that you can get chromes done on the NHS. So <clears throat> even though technically you, you know Barry Cockcroft used to tell me, of course you did, no problem. And uh, and he was standing next to a bloke who told me that he did tons of crimes on the NHS and he couldn't understand what I was talking about you know part of the Department of Health blackies white policy on the truth and um, so the governor of the Bank of England has caused this massive problem by monetizing all the government debt has got the cheek to stand there and say he's sorry you know, he feels sorry that inflation's going up and that it's, you know, they're not raising interest rates. In other words, so they're letting that <laughs> the car's out of control. Everybody's standard of living is going to take a real plummet, a real dive. And he's um, not going to put his foot on the brake uh, because he doesn't think that he thinks the car will slow down naturally. <laughs> And he's sorry, he said he's sorry. He's sorry that people are having to pay more for inflation. But he's not saying, I'm sorry because it's my fault I did it. He's saying, basically, he's, the story is, first of all, that it's transitory. Uh, although, of course, the effects aren't going to be transitory, you know. I mean, a year of 5% inflation means that everything's 5% more expensive in future. It doesn't, they don't, prices don't go back down to where they were. They go up 5% and then they stay up 5% and then they carry on going up from there. But his uh, argument is that um, what happens is, if everybody starts talking about inflation, then everybody starts putting their prices up and asking for higher wages in anticipation or expectation of inflation. And, um, and then before you know it, there you've got it, inflation caused by the workers wanting higher wages and caused by the shops and the greedy capitalists wanting higher prices. Whereas in fact, the Milton Friedman was absolutely right. The Chicago School of Economics, inflation is caused by a surplus of money caused by a profligate government printing and uh, for which the Bank of England takes no responsibility and really should you know, it's, it's a shocking. House of Lords came out with a report that actually pinned this on the Bank of England. They said, they even pointed out <coughs> that, that when the government wanted money and uh, wrote an IOU, that just happened to coincide with times that the Bank of England bought the IOUs and and uh, created the money that bought them. Bank of England, in case you're wondering how the Bank of England can do that, they're in charge of the money supply. They are allowed to expand and contract the money supply as they see fit to uh, they say to uh, maintain full employment and a 2% inflation so they are allowed just to create money out of nothing um, but they tend to not create money out of nothing in pursuit of full employment and 2% inflation they tend to create money out of nothing when the government wants to have got a few IOUs to sell so <laughs> So that's why everyone's getting so cross. But I'm amazed that they uh, uh, get away with it. But they do because it's a complicated con and it's been going on for a hundred years. Hello. You can tell that someone <coughs> is a bit confused when they've got one of those rubber strips that just grounds them. One of those non-conducting rubber strips that's dragged on the floor and now doesn't even contact the floor so couldn't ground them even if it conducted anything which it doesn't because it's rubber uh, one of your patients comes in with one of those on the car look out that's all i can say right i'm gonna have a nice morning went to see the bond film last night that was really good i recommend that if you're a bond fan not so much if you're not, but you know, if you are, it's good, worth worth a watch for 4.99. You know, what the hell? All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye.